think about um, you know that two way conversation rather that than that one way broadcast. Mm -hmm. Where where is your talk target audience playing? Yeah. Um, and think about your target audience also has a bit of a split personality. So I am a completely different person on LinkedIn yeah. to the person I am on Instagram to the person I'm not on really on Facebook anymore. But um, you still know, exists. So, so it still, still can be big for some companies. Yeah. You've got yeah. to think about think about that. Yep. And the other thing is. Um, you must pay to play yep. and you must have somebody who knows how to target and optimize your ads. Otherwise, it's just going to be go into. Good afternoon and welcome to another episode of Better Business, Better Life. Today, I am joined by Melanie Spencer, who is the group CEO of Socialites Group. And she joined Socialites about three and a half, four years ago as their group CEO um, and has actually recently, well, has bought into the business as now also a part owner of the business. Is that right? It sure is. Yeah. Hi, Deborah. Nice to be here yeah. and, and to meet you. Absolutely lovely to have you in here. So we just had a little bit of a chat before we came into the, the podcast room, obviously, to sort of get a sense of who you are. And you have quite an interesting story in terms of how you got to be to where you are today. So why don't you share that with us? Yeah, sure. Um, definitely a little bit of a squiggly line. Um, I uh, was um, born I was born overseas and then came back to New Zealand and then went back overseas for 13 years um, and uh, started my agency life in a PR agency in Sydney and that's where I got my taste for telling stories and, and the agency world um, and you either love it or hate it yep. and um, I definitely got the bug um, and after 10 years in Sydney and, and having three babies um, came back to New Zealand um, and um, had a stint in a couple of agencies in New Zealand. Um, Was that PR agencies? PR, or? PR yeah. agencies. Yep. Uh, but the funny thing is actually in Sydney, we were looking after um, really high profile chefs. Uh, and, and I think back and I'm like, actually, that was influencer work but <laughs> <laughs> way back then. Yep. So um, and then came back here and then I went client side and I absolutely loved it. And that was my sort of first foray into uh, growing a business. Mm. I became GM quite quickly and um, and uh, was in a commercial interior design business and um, helped grow the business and the people and and everything so that was my first sort of my taste of growing a business and not just looking at it from a marketing perspective and so was that deliberate or was it a bit accidental that you got into client side definitely accidental yep. <laughs> um, I got tapped on the shoulder and I was like absolutely I want to give it a go yep. um, because I've never worked client side mm -hmm. um, and after a few years I said I'm never going back to agency ever 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 again <laughs> And then I got tapped on the shoulder again and I went back to agency and um, now I've got the bug again, yep. of course. Perfect. Yeah. And so tell us a little bit about Socialites. You know, um, for those who've never heard of Socialites, the name's pretty self-evident, <laughs> but still, let's have a, a bit of an explanation. <laughs> No problems. Uh, so Socialites is a full service uh, social media agency mm -hmm. um, and we're deep experts in everything social media. So when you think we've got teams that are experts in the content creation, we've got team of experts in the media, um, the, um, sorry, the media um, and performance side, yep. um, the influencers um, and um, community management. Um, so we've got a team of um, just over 40-ish yep. um, and um, that's just about to grow more right. this year. And it grew reasonably quickly, didn't it? I mean, I remember I actually, as I explained to you, I know Wendy from yes. way, way back when we used to work at the Ice House, but it's actually been an agency that's kind of grown quite quickly and more so in the last few years. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. No, we have. Um, it's really taken off. I think COVID, um, although when COVID hit, um, I felt like I was on a trading floor and, and our clients were saying, hold, hold. I was like, don't you go quiet on your community now. Um, and um but then all of a sudden, um, everybody realized that it was one of the only ways that they could uh, keep in touch with mm. their community. So, you know, things really, really started rolling um, and um, growing very, very quickly. Perfect. Now, in terms of, you, I always ask my guests this, in terms of your, your journey so far in life, what are the mm. things you're most proud of professionally and personally? 
Uh, personally, I would say my children, mm -hmm. uh, 100%. I think most mums would actually say that. But they're she pretty. She dads too, surprisingly, <laughs> when I bring them in here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They're just really cool humans yeah. and I love hanging out with them. Yep. Um, and they're just uh, very um, smart, ambitious, but lovely people, which is really important. Yeah. Um, I think professionally, I think uh, the growth of socialites mm -hmm. um, has been my um, my sort of most proudest thing professionally, for Perfect. sure. So it's been about, so as I say, three and a half, four years. So when mm. you came into socialites, how big was it then? And where is it? So you said it's about 40 FTEs now, about to get bigger again with more acquisitions. What was it like four years ago? Yeah. Uh, so I think there were about 12 to 12 employees at that stage yep. um, and we've had about 590% growth since then so wow. it's it's pretty significant um, and I think that is really um, uh, because of Wendy and I teaming up and, and working really closely together mm -hmm. during that time and um, and just we, we just lean on each other um, which has been um, just a wonderful wonderful ride. So what's Wendy's role in the business now? Yeah, so Wendy's founder and she looks after special projects yep. um, and also leads um, any acquisitions as well that we um, might be doing. So we've done two um, over the last couple of years. Um, yep. We acquired the Social Club, which was New Zealand's um, largest influencer marketing agency, um, and also Flying Tiger, which is um, a Chinese social media marketing yeah, agency, yeah. um, and um, a couple more, but which I can't divulge just yet. That's fair enough. I understand. We don't want to <laughs> put any other secrets out there. Um, so I suppose in, in the EOS language, we actually talk about these two roles, one being a visionary, one being an integrator. Mm. And the visionary sounds a little bit like Wendy. She's the founder. She's the one that kind of, you know, took the business to where it was to a certain level. And they do the big special projects, mergers, acquisitions. And then the integrator sounds like you, who's really keeping all the, the wheels oiled and making sure everybody's doing what they should be doing, holding them accountable. Is that what it is in, in the role in your business? Is that how it works? Yeah, I think so. Um, I'd like to see myself as a visionary as well. Yeah. Um, and um, Wendy and I, but we we are so aligned with our vision. It's really weird. Like sometimes yep. I'll be texting her when I'm getting ready in the morning. I'm like, oh my gosh, I've just had an epiphany, and she's like, oh, that's awesome. And and we're very very aligned in that regard. Um, and she will absolutely build that foundation mm -hmm. or, or get it going, and then um, and then I'll start running. Yeah. <laughs> fast <laughs> excellent and jumping around so mm. I mean it's great that you're on the same page mm. from a vision perspective you two of you how do you keep the rest of the team involved in that and how do they know what you're trying to do yeah so we have um, quarterly sessions with our senior leadership team mm -hmm. um, and bring them along the journey for sure and in fact we get them to help we get them to build the strategy um, and plan on a page with us yep. um, you know we Wendy and I already have it um, but we really really want the senior leadership team to, to help us build on that yep. and it's quite interesting because they're super aligned with us as well mm -hmm. um, and um, yeah it works really really well so we do quarterly sessions yep. uh, and then um, we um, then present that to the team yeah Fantastic. Yeah, That's yeah. pretty much what we kind of advocate in the US as well. Yeah. So I'm really intrigued, you know, the growth that you've had has been phenomenal, right? Mm. Um, that must have come with some challenges along the way. <laughs> <laughs> Without, again, giving away the secret source or any competitive information, can you share with us some of the challenges that might have presented to you? There's definitely no secret source. Um, <laughs> this might be a lot of winging it. Um, uh, look, uh, look, the challenges uh, definitely would, especially last year, mm. um, We've got a young team yep. um, and you can imagine when the borders opened, <sighs> they were like, freedom. <laughs> um, so they, uh, you know, a, a few left to go overseas mm -hmm. um, and I was a massive supporter of that. I was overseas for 13 years um, and I think it's really, really important for, for New Zealanders to um, um, go abroad and, and get experience. Yep. So that would have been, you know, it was an unsettling period and I think, everyone was just unsure about everything. Mm -hmm. And that just caused, I think, um, just a level of uncertainty for everybody. Sure. Um, so that was really, really challenging. Um, and filling in the gaps and making everybody feel secure 
mm-hmm. when it was not that secure was quite was very challenging. Yeah. I found last year the most challenging, I'd have to say. And so how did you get yourself through that? Because you're obviously very supportive of the staff, which is great, but then they're also leaving holes in the business that you then have to fill. So what kind of strategies do you employ personally to, to ensure that you could actually get through that? Mm, so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I love, I'm liking this already. <laughs> Uh, it was hard because I yep. had a young baby as well. Of course, that's right. Yes. So that's probably why I found it really difficult because I had lack of sleep yep. um, and um, quite a difficult sort of um, year with, with, you know, everything at work. So yep. um, I found it really, really hard. And what I've done at the end of this year and over the summer break, I've thought long and hard about what I need. Yep. Um, and um, I've realized that I just need to be a little bit selfish. Um, <laughs> Good. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And also I've actually worked on some, um, I've only really just started, but in the last couple of weeks, I'm trying to train myself to get up at 5.30 in the morning and do at least five to 10 minutes of yoga, exercise, that yep. sort of thing. So um, I'm trying to train myself to be a little more selfish so I can give back to everybody else this year. Yeah, I think that's actually really, really important. I mean, we, you know, we want to help others, we want to be there for them, but at the same time, the oxygen mask concept, you know, exactly. you haven't got it on yourself. And I mean, I've been through this myself in my various businesses where I've actually, you know, been so focused on looking after everybody else that my health suffered that, um, and not just the not just the health, it's the mental health. Because if you're always giving, 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 then you don't have anything left in the tank to actually do the strategic work that's required. No, it's pretty taxing. Yeah. So I've made a big mental shift that yep. this year is going to be quite different. Awesome. Yeah. Okay, great. So the social lights, obviously, yeah, you said everything social media, and there's some things I hadn't even thought about in there that are part of social media. Mm. Tell us a little bit about the kind of work that you do with clients and, and what that looks like. Yeah, so um, we uh, run big uh, campaigns um, and it could be across everything that we do. So we could do the big um, audit and strategy and then do um, all their content creation across all the platforms. So think TikTok, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, um, and uh, and then we, you know, you need to get um, eyeballs in yep. front of those ads. So that's the performance side. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the community management is um, we've got um, CM is nine AM to nine PM, three hundred and sixty. I want to say three hundred and sixty five days a year now because yep. um, our amazing CM um, head of CM worked on Christmas Day this year. Oh, no. Um, (laughs) (laughs) um, So uh, they're the ones that are responsible for that um, two-way banter mm-hmm. on social yep. um, and also answering any questions and we're sort of um, moving into a little bit of more of customer service as well because you can imagine people who are asking questions about products or services or anything really or have um, something bad to say Issues, about yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, their product or service, they go on social media now. Yeah. So it's our team's responsibility to to go back and help the customer with whatever they need Um, and of course influencers and influencers are becoming such a massive part of um, uh, of marketing yep. and in fact um, I read somewhere that it's going to be like the second um, um, highest line item now on the CMO's um, wow. PNL um, for spend yeah well, that's interesting because so, I was actually thinking maybe it was starting to, to do um, you know no. quite, go down a bit but it's still still growing oh no yeah? it's absolutely still growing and there's micro influencers and, and there's obviously you know what do you call them what do you call them macro influencers yep. yeah yeah yeah, yeah, so you've celebs, got nanos, yeah. you've got micros, uh, you've got macros, you've got celebs, um, and um, we run um, uh, influencer campaigns all over the world, mm-hmm. um, and um, and that's the that's a beautiful beautiful thing about running a digital agency you can run it from New Zealand and um, I think we've run campaigns across 69 countries oh wow yeah fantastic yeah okay what's the thing you've enjoyed most about that sort of growth journey with socialites um look I I um I just love seeing my the, the people and the growth yep. in the people, um, but also the growth in the clients and the brands that we work mm. on. Like, there's nothing better than seeing a business grow yep. because of the work that your team has done. And 
our team is they are so incredible what they do um like having a brainstorm with our team is just like you walk out and you're literally fizzing well and and it and what i say is um you know it doesn't matter if you've been at the table for five minutes or 20 years the you know the person that's an intern can have some of the best ideas yeah. So that's, it's just, that's the fun part yeah. um, and just watching the growth in everybody. So it can be hard sometimes though to get the right people. So how do you go about finding the right people to actually kind of work with socialites? I think the most important thing for me is values mm -hmm. and attitude. Yep. And I always say that you can learn any skill. I agree completely. Um, <laughs> <laughs> That's what I used to do. I mean, in my early career days, it was like, I mean, Google wasn't quite so prevalent yeah. then, but if it had been there then, I'd have been even better at what I was doing because I'd just go, okay, don't know how, but I'll find out how. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> exactly. So um, I it, that um, values and attitude and um, just being a decent, awesome human being <laughs> yep. um, is is number one. Um, and I think we're all we're all quite, we're different, but all quite similar people. Yeah. I mean, it just works. And we've got a huge amount of respect for each other. Sometimes we can have a little bit of a, you know, like a, um, you know, I, I guess I was going to say biffo, but not biffo. Not quite a biffo, but, yeah, but, but a, a but heated a, debate. A heated debate. <laughs> yes. But, and I love that. And it's like, we, we just, um, we're so open and honest with each other and yeah. have a huge amount of respect for each other. So we can just, I will literally nip that in the bud straight away yep. let's grab a room let's talk about it and then it's like all right let's let's go on it's actually time. You, you can see there's an elephant just over there. that's one of the things that I think is really really important is that teams it's okay to actually have a bit of a fight as yes. long as we're doing it for the greater good yes. then we absolutely should have those discussions because if we're all sitting around a table disagreeing all the time yeah we're not we're getting not. the diversification we're not going kind to of exploring all options we're not necessarily getting the best results from it so mm. I actually think and whatever we want to call it having a heated debate is actually really important for a business yeah and yeah. it's and it's important I don't like confrontation at yeah, all yeah. I'm not good at it <laughs> I don't like it. I'd rather not have it. Yep. Um, but I am learning in my old age um, to have those courageous conversations and also um, probably bringing my team along um, for the ride as well yep. as I'm learning to to do that myself mm. it's one of the things I mean I'm a little bit older than you and I remember I had to learn that because I, I love people and so for me having a conversation that was a bit icky was it didn't work for me and so I, I learned that I actually had to write things down um, before I went into the meeting so I actually knew what I had to say and couldn't let it go and then I'd actually start the conversation with look I'd much rather stick my head on a toilet than have this conversation with you but we have to have this conversation um, and I just found that really helped to lighten the mood a wee bit and 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 and, and show the other person that you're you're not really comfortable doing it, but it has to be done. Yeah. Yeah. And I think um, that vulnerability is yeah. is really important mm. because we're not robots. No. Even though we're um, business leaders and, and um, you know, we, we want this thing to grow and we'll, we want this thing to work, mm -hmm. but it is also really important to remember that we're also human. Yes. Yeah. 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 All of all of us are human yeah. beings, the leaders and the, exactly. the team. Exactly. Um, so, I mean, I, I, we were big proponents of, you know, core values and making sure you're actually living, breathing, hiring, firing by them. But often when you interview somebody, you know, they can put on this beautiful front that actually isn't the real them. So how do you test those values in the, the initial interview process or even, yeah, well, at the beginning? Uh, that's a really interesting question. We've mm. actually just changed our values. Ah. Um, and uh, so uh, it is something that uh, I, I will always do the, I pretty much always do the first interview, funnily yep. enough, even if it's um, a, a junior. very junior role. Yep. Um, and and then I like to have a big team interview, mm -hmm. um, informal team interview. Uh, and I, there's, there's nothing that we've got set in stone and probably we should. Um, I haven't made too many mistakes, but <laughs> yep. um, yeah, I think it's uh, a feeling that you get. Yep. Um, and the information that you get from um, their previous jobs, but also their life. Yep. Their yeah, life what are they doing? Like, that's yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. And I think that team interview thing is actually quite important mm. because um, different people will get different reactions from other people as well. So it's really cool. Mm. Okay. Have you ever had somebody who didn't kind of fit those core values? Yeah. Well, yeah? Of course. Yep. 
Of How course. do you deal with that? <laughs> um, you know, with difficulty. Yeah. As, as I said, I don't like confrontation. Mm-hmm. I don't like to make people feel um, not great about themselves. Yep. Um, but um, look, my mum taught me to do everything with grace. And, um, and, I, and I think in any situation, if you're not happy, they're generally not happy either. Mm, and yep. I don't want to see anyone failing mm. ever. Yeah. Ever, ever, ever. <laughs> um, and so it's really, really important that if it's not the right role or the right company and they're not feeling good about it, mm-hmm. then um, we need to have that conversation yeah. um, because at the end of the day, they need to be happy. Yes. Yeah. 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 yeah, and I completely agree. And I think sometimes we think, oh, but this is such a, a nice person, but they just don't fit in here. Mm. And you need to be really, really confident that they will find somewhere else where they really do fit in. And they, and will. they will be happier. Your entire team will be happier because often that person that's in that um, team, you don't realize what a negative impact they're having on the entire team. And so I've seen it with teams that I work with where somebody finally leaves and, and the whole team goes, oh, whew, gosh, it's so much better now that they're not here, you know? So yeah, it's, but that person will be happier in their new role as well. And my number one priority is is the business yeah. and everybody that's in that business mm-hmm. um and um sometimes you have to rip the band-aid or you pretty much have to rip the band-aid off pretty quickly yep. um to resolve that issue and everybody is so much happier yeah yeah, yeah. fantastic and nobody's done anything wrong no <laughs> um, and i think yeah i just wanted to stress that nobody's yep. ever done anything wrong but i think it's just a process that you have to go through yeah absolutely yeah. and i think that you know i think as you you um, grow and you age sometimes we change and what worked for us in the past doesn't work in the future and the same with the company as mm. a company grows you know the people you had in the beginning may not be the right people going forward because it's not just about core values but what roles do you have mm. what role can they play in the business for sure. Yeah. Yeah. How do you, because it, when you're growing so fast, mm. um, how do you kind of manage that and, and know what kind of roles you need to have and, and how do you stay ahead of the, the curveball? Yeah. So, I, again, I, I do it really intuitively. Yeah. I'm thinking about um, our team all the time and imagining where they can move within the business. Um, I'm really, really big on developing um, our team members and giving them breadth and depth of um, experience. Mm -hmm. Um, But of course, you move one person, it's like a domino effect with the rest of the team. So um, it takes time. Um, But uh, I, I have a plan. Um, and uh, it's about communicating with the team members as well. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, these are these are the options. This is what I'm looking at. What are your thoughts? Mm-hmm. And then there, if they're like, "Yep, this is this is the direction that I want to take," then I will just form a path, clear yeah. that path for them, um, which of course takes time. Yeah. But um, yeah, that's something that I'm really really big on yeah. um, because a it's retention of your best team members, mm-hmm. um, but it, it, also change change is really important especially for fast moving yeah. ambitious young people absolutely mm. i love it okay what are the plans for the future uh-huh. you know again without giving away anything too much what where do we see socialites in the future what, what do you think is uh-huh. coming up I Obviously, think, a couple of new potential acquisitions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely, uh, we are looking at a couple of acquisitions, mm-hmm. uh, and I think socialites will be look a little bit different mm. to what we have looked like in the past. Okay, um, you know, we um, like to turn things on its head. Yes, um, and like to just flip things around a bit so yeah. um it will be yeah be an interesting couple of years cool because there's a lot of stuff going on in the in the social media spaces and i mean the whole ai um, gpt3 is changing the way that we do things and i know a lot of people are very dead set against it but i was talking to a client the other day who was saying they actually use the ai stuff to get them started on something and then they put their own flavor on it and they do whatever but it, it gives them rather than a blank piece of paper you've got something to start working with 100 percent. Yeah. it gives you a framework yeah and it's just like um i was uh my team and I were talking about, you know, when I was studying, Mm -hmm. I'd have to go to the library, yes, you know, (laughs) and open a book. And then the internet came along. And now there's chat GPT. And that's just a, that's just the next level. level. Yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) Um, And brilliant. Uh, So, you know, you, you're never going to not have your deep expertise mm. um, and flair. And that's something that um, oh, yeah, we were talking do. about with the team. I was like, we can never lose that socialites flair and that magic. Mm-hmm. Um, but if there's something that can help with a framework of like a position description yeah. or a contract or something that helps us just 
go faster. Go faster. Yeah. Then bring it on, I say. <laughs> I have to laugh. I don't know if you notice in the, in the in the workshop space, I've actually got a sort of encyclopedias up on the top shelf. And that is because when I was growing up, like there wasn't, the, I mean, we had the internet just, but there was actually, it was encyclopedias. That's where you went to kind of find your information. And so I had a bit of a play um, with the AI stuff the other day because I hadn't really got into it. And it's mm. actually, it's actually really, really helpful. Mm. And I say it doesn't take away because the way that I write the style that I have is always going to be my own style, um, but it does make things a little bit easier. And I don't think it will take away from jobs. I think it will just change the jobs that humans are actually doing, mm. which brings more value to those jobs. Yeah, and it will just level up people. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay, cool. So we're looking at some growth, potentially some turning things on its head, yeah. Yep. Um, yeah. In terms of we haven't asked you about um, – I know you work with larger companies, but the, the companies that we generally talk to are more mid-sized. Yep. So they're, they're not small, but they are, you know, 50 to 200 staff. Mm-hmm. They've, they've been around for a while. Um, a lot of them, social media is still quite a new thing for them. Like I was gobsmacked in the whole lockdown. A number of people who actually joined LinkedIn for the first time. <laughs> I was like, I've been on LinkedIn for, I don't know, however long it's been going for, but some people had never even been on it or been involved with it. Yeah. You've now got, obviously, you've got TikTok, you've got mm-hmm. um, all kinds of things, including um, global uh, social media channels that they can see over here Mm. what's the advice to somebody who's kind of thinking about getting into social media for the first time or wants to know what do I say what do I do what Mm. would you say to them um we do work with a lot of mid-tier um brands yep uh what I would say is make sure that you've got your a strategy yep uh that's really really important Mm. because if you just start throwing things up willy-nilly um and it's social media is not about posting up pretty pictures anymore and a you know like a selfie and it's it it is actually um far more complicated than that um have a strategy have a plan yeah um but also um have some confidence uh because i think a lot of people like i don't i just can't do it i just you know i don't know how to start just start yeah um <laughs> and also focus on a couple of platforms don't try and do, do all, all of them, them. Yeah. um because a it's expensive you've got to pay to play yeah. um it's um no longer can you go on social media and just throw up a couple of posts and hope to get you know a community of yeah you know, hundreds of thousands of people just doesn't work like that anymore. <laughs> no. yeah. And even if it's, I mean, so there, there is the cost of actually, you know, purchasing to get that stuff happening. But there's also a time cost as well. If you're trying to be on all platforms, um, there's a time cost to actually to manage that. And, you know, I go back to traditional marketing. You need to be very targeted. Where are your audience actually playing? Where do you want to be seen with? What do you need to, and offer value as well. You know, it's mm. all very well. A lot of people think that's all about selling. Um, it really isn't about it's not. selling at all, is yeah. it? Yeah, no, it's not. Yep. Think about social media media is your long-term solution rather than sort of a short-term hit and think of it as a a brand building exercise and once you've built that brand then you can start selling well then Um, you have conversations at least exactly (laughs) exactly and remember you know social media is a two-way conversation not a one one one-way broadcast Mm -hmm. Um, and nobody likes to uh, be sold to if if you don't have a relationship with that person I'm like it's like you know, going on a first date with someone, yeah, um, and ask them to marry you, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I, I like, and I, I use this when I do a lot of talks to students about networking. What networking really means to me, and networking to me is actually about building a community of people that you want to help, mm. who may eventually help you in return. But you're there to actually ask how I can help you and how I can add value. And uh, you know, with social media, it'd be like walking up to a complete stranger in the street and going. Hi, my name's Deborah. I'm a business coach. I do blah, 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 blah. You want to fancy going, you know, fancy working with me? I mean, you wouldn't do it to a complete no. stranger on the street. Why do we think You'd it's different on social mile. media? Absolutely you run would a run a mile. Yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and yet, sadly, especially on platforms like LinkedIn, there's a lot of people who just blast that mm. stuff at you. And it's like, wow. Yeah. Whew, back yeah. off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. A little bit. Yeah, yes. yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, what about tips for people? Um, so, if, you know, even if they're going to be doing on their own or they're working with an agency, what would be the three top tips? tips that you might give them about building a business about doing their social media um let's talk about social social media yep um first tip is to get your strategy done yeah um and your strategy will include you know who your audience is what is your brand's personality um you know what how do you encapsulate that personality on on social and your tone of voice Mm -hmm. um and um who who wants to buy your product or service and think about um you know always think about they don't want to buy a drill they want to they want a hole yeah yeah, yeah, you know great analogy yeah yeah. (laughs) so um think about um 
you know, that two-way conversation rather that, than that one-way broadcast. Mm -hmm. Where Where is your talk target audience playing? Yep. Um, and think about your target audience also has a bit of a split personality. So I'm a completely different person on LinkedIn yeah. to the person I am on Instagram to the person I'm not on really on Facebook anymore, but, um, you still know. Exists, so so it still exists. Still can be big for some companies. Yeah. You've got yeah. to think about, think about that. Yep. And the other thing is um, – you must pay to play yep. and you must have somebody who knows how to target and optimize your ads. Otherwise, it's just going to be going to. Oh, you can spend, I mean, I remember back in the day when we when it was very, very early on, you know, the online stuff was considered the cheap part of advertising. You had TV, you had radio, you had print press. That was all the expensive stuff and the online was the cheap stuff. But that's not the case anymore. I mean, actually, it's, you know, it can be effective, but you can literally throw big money down a hole, can't you? Yeah, you can. Yeah. Um, and you don't need to. That's the mm. beautiful thing. Yeah. Um, if you get it right, you shouldn't have to spend a ton of money. Yeah. But it is now becoming one of the largest, um, biggest, most effective way of marketing businesses. Yep. So why wouldn't you spend money? Um, oh, you can make a dollar fifty from a dollar. Why wouldn't you spend more money? Exactly. exactly. Okay, so get your strategy done. Really important. You know who you're talking to, how you're talking to them, uh, what they want from you, how you add value. Number two. Oh, that was. I thought that was one, two, three, and four. Oh no, no, no. That's not number one. I want to. I want to milk more from you. Come on. <laughs> Um, I think um, in terms of uh, social, um, what else? Goodness me. This, I mean, well, talk about so... working with an agency. I mean, there's lots of agencies oh, out there, right? Agency. So, so yes. how do you pick the right agency? Because, you know, there's there's one-man bands who tell you they're experts. There are big yes. companies who tell you they're experts. You've got um, complete full-service agencies who'll say, oh, yes, we've got a, a t team that does that as well. So how do you pick a good agency? Oh, well, you just pick socialites. Of um, course. <laughs> no <laughs> brainer. <laughs> Look, I think it's really, really important to have the rapport and the trust. Yep. Um, so there are um, uh, lots of cowboys and cowgirls out there, yep. um, especially in digital and social. Mm -hmm. So you need to know um, that they're deep experts and not just throwing up a pretty picture and some copy. Like it is, it's so much more convoluted than that now. Yep. Um, so that is really, really important. Uh, we tend to work with some of the biggest agencies, um, creative agencies and media agencies, and we're now at the table with them. Yep. Um, and, you know, some of the bigger agencies are amazing at social, um, but they're not specialists in, or experts in social. Yep. Their expertise are, are really um, those big, massive brand ads. Um, and then what we do is feed into, ladder up to those brand ads and make it um, sing on, on social. Yep. Um, so, look, it, it really depends. Um, it's unique to every single business, mm. to the type of agency that you work with. Yep. Um, and you just need to look at the work that um, that they have done in the past mm -hmm. um, and also maybe even get a couple of, speak to a couple of clients. Yeah. Okay, perfect. And personality fit, of course, yeah, as well. Yeah, I think that's actually, really, really It's like important. a marriage, isn't it? Yeah. It is a marriage. Like you are literally talk. you should be talking to your agency every other day yep. or having some sort of communication with them. Sure. So you've got to like each other. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Love it. Um, the top, the, the third tip, I'm actually going to ask you, we had a bit of a conversation before we came in here about the fact uh, my podcast brief talks about, you know, um, it's very much aimed at men because the, most of the, the listeners are men. And I explained to you that um, in my experience, a lot of the larger companies are actually run by men, like it or not. What do you think women can do to kind of be at the table a bit more? And um, how do we encourage women to actually want to take their business from being a small business to a, 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 a big business? Um, that's a really good question. Mm. Uh, Sorry to put you on the spot. No, <laughs> no, that's, that's, that's okay. I, I, you know what? I, I think it's almost um, a little bit of um, selfishness. Mm -hmm. I think, number one, you've got to be a little bit selfish. Yep. Your, your kids are going to be okay. And, in <laughs> fact, they're going to be really, really proud of you. Yeah. Um, be... You just need a, a ton of um, gusto. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. and you need to, you, you, you're going to work really, really hard, but so much comes out of it. Yeah. You know, you're going to get so much out of it. Husband's going to be okay. Kids are going to be okay. You're going to get a lot out of it. Yeah. Um, so just go for it. Mm. 
I think it's really interesting too. I think that people are really scared that if they go from being a one man, two man band to being a larger business, it'll actually be more work and more hard work. But in actual fact, there's a real sweet spot that once you get to a certain size, it becomes easier Mm. and you actually get back to doing what you love doing Mm. and all the other stuff is dealt with by other people. So in actual fact, um, I believe the larger you grow, uh, the better that it becomes for you because you actually get to do the stuff you really, really love and you can delegate everything else. (laughs) Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So uh, so my advice is, you know, don't be, don't be scared about growing. It doesn't necessarily have to come with more work and more hours. Yeah. Yeah. And, and we talked about, you know, taking those risks and change and, and humans need to do that. Um, and we, you know, that's just innate in us. Uh, so I think it's really important um, to to push the boat out and and um, and you you know you look back and go wow I did that yeah um, and if you don't try it you will never know yeah, completely agree mm. I got the same advice from my father about saying so you should try everything once otherwise you won't know what what's going we you know what it's like um, I don't think I you can I took it very back. literally yeah, yeah, yeah. You can always go back well that's right yeah. like, what have you got to lose yeah exactly yeah there's no issue yeah if big's not your your bag then then go back and be small yeah Yeah. exactly (laughs) perfect okay that's great hey look um really appreciate you sharing all this with us and really nice to actually meet you in terms of if people want to work with you what is your ideal kind of client what do they look like i know that you do you know various sizes is there a particular type of person or um team that you like to work with um, anyone that believes in social media. Mm-hmm. Okay, it's a good start. <laughs> it's yeah, a, it's a really good start. <laughs> yeah. If, you, if you're not digging social media then um, yeah. and not quite there yet, mm-hmm. we're very happy to, to educate and bring you along and hold your hand. Yeah. Um, but we're at the stage now where, you know, social media works um, and, um, you know, we want to take you on that, on that journey. Yeah. Um, and look, we work with all sorts of sizes of businesses, big international, big corporates, um, medium size, mid tier businesses yep. where you know you've got a marketing team of a few people, um, and you really just want to um, uh, to to blow your social media out of yep. the, out of the water, um, and you have a person that can dedicate the time to. to pulling all the assets together and the creative and helping the agency do their best work. So that's probably our um, our optimal client. Perfect. Yeah. And I suppose you know, there's a couple of people who might be listening who think, oh, I might come and working for Social Lights. So if they want to either come and work with you or work for you, how would they find you? Just um, <laughs> send me an email. Yep. Okay. Melanie at Social Lights. Brilliant. Dot co. Dot co. Dot NZ. NZ. Yeah. Wonderful. Hey, look, Melanie, thank you so much for your time. Really oh, appreciate nice. it. Look forward to seeing um, what happens in the next sort of few months with all these big plans that you've got. I'm sure it'll be very exciting. And by the way, congratulations on what you've achieved. Really Thank good work. you so much. It's <laughs> lovely to be here. Pleasure. Thank you.